Hi guys, um, thanks for stopping by. I've been meaning to do this reading for some time. I think that a lot of us that have been kind of paying attention to this or who knew about this person, we were not happy to hear about this. I wasn't sure of the um, zodiac, the astrology chart, the natal chart information that I was finding online. That's why it took me some time to do it. And there's a certain house system in astrology that I'm used to using, so I was a little hesitant. I'm going to go ahead and do this. As soon as I looked at his picture, the words I got was not fair. Now, I don't know if that's coming from me or him, because honestly, it can be coming from him or me. Um, so I'm not happy to do this, but I, you know what, I think that certain situations need to be talked about and so since this is what I do this is what I'm gonna do so this is my contribution so as I always say um, this reading is for entertainment purposes only I do not know this person I do not know this person personally or anybody affiliated with him um, there was one reading I did about a person who uh, went on and that was not fun it may have been because of who the person was while they were in this lifetime I don't know so you know what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna act like he's just like everybody else and I'm just gonna read his chart and if something comes up I'm gonna say it and of course I'm gonna be respectful so thank you so much for stopping by everybody I'm gonna be doing a reading on twitch boss and uh, yeah let's see what comes out this is not the astrological house system that I'm used to, okay? But I'm going to do my best, folks. All right. So. Do, 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 do. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> this is the 12th house in astrology. And, it, you know, if this chart is correct, then he would have had his Mars in the 12th house. And in what zodiac sign? Yes, yeah, Sagittarius. That's pretty cool. So Mars and Sagittarius people are natural gentlemen. They're natural gentlemen. And when I say that, what I mean is they're naturally classy and they know how to dress. Naturally classy and they know how to dress. They have manners and respect for other people. They're not doing anything that is like disrespectful to other people or anything like that. There's people like that, but the Mars in Sagittarius man is not like that. Um, I'm not going to talk about the houses. Uh, that's when you're doing an in-depth reading, you can discuss houses and aspects, but I'm just looking at his personality. So I know he was a classy man, that's for sure. So that's pretty cool. And I'm only reading the personal planets, Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars. And I do look at Jupiter and I do look at North Node just for fun. Okay. And what do you know? There's Jupiter. Okay. So he had Jupiter in Scorpio in the 11th. Jupiter in Scorpio in the 11th. It's kind of interesting. Uh, it's kind of interesting because the 11th house talks about our hopes, dreams, and wishes, but the Scorpio energy makes things secretive. And the Scorpionic energy is not always, I don't want to say it's, I don't want to say it's not positive. I don't want to call it negative. Let's just say it can be deep. There's another word that I was going to use, but I'm not going to use that. Uh, it's deep. Okay, so he's got Jupiter and Scorpio on the 11th, which is kind of deep. So normally I would say, oh, Jupiter in the 11th, yay, hopes, dreams, and wishes coming through. Jupiter's fame, fortune, luck. But when it's in Scorpio, that's talking about a lot of hidden things. That's talking about deep things. And the 11th house is also, it's, it's, it's governed by Aquarius, which is the internet the world and groups. So to have the energy of hidden things and secrecy and the occult sitting on your house of your hopes, dreams and wishes. I don't know. I don't know. It's like Jupiter is supposed to give you good things, but the scorpionic energy in that position, like I, like I was saying, so it could be, it, 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 things could be going on that we didn't know about. That we, that we wouldn't have known about because it, it's secrets and hidden things. Okay, 
so like how would somebody get through a jupiter how, how what, what what is something positive i could say about jupiter and scorpio um they want good things they can do good things but they're probably the type of person that depends on self and doesn't ask for help and they want to win by them putting in the work okay so let's keep going let's let's just keep going all right so i'm seeing that he had oh boy here here's where it gets a little tricky for me to read this house system now so this would be yeah sitting in the 10th okay so he's got mercury and libra in the 10th that's good for communication so he had a really good communication in his in his work and mercury being there i always talk about mercury being like a channeling energy that like runs through the body uh, and it's in Libra, so that's air to air. And when we put air with air, it's not like air with fire, but it's very good in terms of um, kind of relating to people and people liking you. He has a high amount of likability in his career. That's what it means because it's in the 10th house. So like I said, Mercury is a channeling energy. Mercury is also a communication energy. And it's sitting in the zodiac sign of, of harmony, love, you know, uh, respect, romance. And that's in his 10th house. So to me, that's a positive thing. It's almost like the people he worked with really felt his love. They really felt the respect that he had. And him doing what he did for a living, that was almost his way of communicating with people, which is so beautiful and so interesting. This was his way of connecting with people. That's what that means in his career. That's really nice. And it might have been his way of like showing people love. Now he's also a Libran son. So he's got double Libra energy in the 10th house. So this was someone who cared about people and you would notice it when you were with him one on one because Libras talk about um, face to face relations, Gemini side by side relations and Aquarius, if I'm not mistaken, is group relations, something like that. So uh, we can see the love. We can see the love. All right, and now I'm moving on to the Venus. Okay, so his, his love planet is sitting in the 10th house. Oh, wow, even more in the zodiac sign of, let me see. Ooh, Virgo. Ooh, okay. This person, when they're in the bedroom with their partner, they like to be very intimate. Now, I know that sounds like so obvious, but no, 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 no. This is on a whole nother level. This is on a whole nother level. This is what I call the, that tactile energy that I want to touch every inch of you energy. And they like it. I was with a Virgo man once and he like wanted to touch. He wanted to touch all of my W-H-O-L-E-S. He also wanted to, you know, feel things like hair and skin. So I know what Virgo energy is about. It will make you tactile. So that's what he liked to do. And that's his form of intimacy. And that's kind of cute, but it, it takes some time to get used to. So, yeah, I mean, and it's sitting in his 10th house. So, and it's Venus. Okay, money. Yeah, I don't want to talk about money. Venus is also a money attractor. Um, but when he loved someone, he loved with precision. He loved with practicality. He showed you by taking care of the daily routine, the things of the daily routine by picking up the milk. You probably didn't have to ask him. He would support his person in a very practical sense, which is beautiful. All right, and moving on. Let's see what else I could find here. Gotta be something, right? Am I missing something? So far, I'm not getting anything bad. 
Okay, the moon, I talked about the Mars, he's classy. Jupiter in uh, in the 11th, hopes, dreams, and wishes can mean hidden things. Um, 10th house, all good with so much Libra there. I'm not getting anything here that looks bad to me. Okay, let me see about this moon. So he's got moon in the third in Aquarius. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. Ooh. Okay. I'm going to be very gentle about how I put this. Okay. And I'm going to tell you the astrological data on each point that I'm going to make. The moon is our emotions. It talks about how moody and changeable we are. Those are the exact words that I read in those astrology books. But for me, the moon is also our emotional attachments. Like, how do we get emotionally attached to someone? I get emotionally attached to people who are, like, really smart. Or who are um, very, I don't know. Um, uh, original. So the moon is, is our emotional attachments and it's also how moody and changeable we are. Okay. So the fact that it's sitting in Aquarius means with his friends, he was consistent. He was consistently a good friend. Um, The thing is, because it's the moon and we're talking about emotional attachments and because it's Aquarius, which talks about groups of people and, and, and really has a huge emphasis on friendships and also being known, being, being quite known, doubling up on that energy, it's also sitting in another air house, which is Gemini. This person, um, I guess I'll say it. He may have easily become emotionally attached to people who were supposed to be just friends. That is probably the only way I could put it. So it's almost like you meet a friend, you're so friendly, you get along with people so well, and somewhere in this interaction, two weeks, two months, two years, somewhere, emotions begin to develop. And they're not a friend anymore. Now they're more. But you know that you're, they're supposed to be friends and that they are your friends, but... In your emotions, there's no difference between what is a friend and what is somebody who you have emotions for. So it's kind of like they were one and the same, is what I want to say. See, for me, I definitely separate the people that I have emotions for. They're not my friends. Those are people I have emotions for. And the people that are my friends, we are not even going there. We are not even going there because my friendship means so much to me. But for some people, they naturally progress from friendship into more. But they may even still be calling it a friend, even though they're doing things that friends don't typically do. So that's what I'm seeing here, honestly, guys. Like, yeah, if this is the right chart. And that's a possibility. And then he's got a lot of Libra energy too. And Libra is very like romance, romance, close relationship. So it's it's not easy for a Libra to have a close relationship with someone and it not be and not turn into love because the heart is so invested so naturally, especially oh no, he's got Venus and Virgo. Okay. So guys, it's really late at night. I just wanted to pay my respects and do this 
reading for, you know, this person that we knew um, by watching him on television and um, really enjoying, you know, his, his talent. So I want to thank you for watching this reading. If this reading was fun for you, if it made sense, please do leave it a thumbs up and uh, leave me a comment. If you have any suggestions or recommendations of someone that you'd like me to do, anybody, and um, subscribe to my channel if you'd like to hear more readings. Oh, and I'm going to be doing some monthly horoscope readings very soon. Soon, soon, soon. Thanks for stopping by the Happy Libra. Bye for now.